The fan fiction is going to go crazy after this. Three Wind and Truth chapters this week, and it's a good thing because pausing at the end of chapter 8 would have been rough. Spoilers for the entire Cosmere, but first, thanks to my patrons! Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, Craig, Scotty, James, Dalinar's Butt, Moochie, Chris, Mithy Caron, Gallant Aegis, and the Son of James. Chapter 7. In the epigraph, the wind officially called a spren, or at least something with spren-like thought patterns. And what do you mean, less common now? The epigraph to chapter 6 mentions the heralds have disappeared, but last week's discussion had Paige remarking rather emphatically that it was the Radiants who were gone. It's changed now, but was that more of a spoiler than just a misread? Adolin is set to ride a flying gallant back to Urethiru with all of his swords. It's hard for me to love that boy anymore. And Gallant moving his legs like a puppy when you hold them above water is adorable. We finally find out why shard blades aren't as plentiful as they used to be. People stop thinking about them, individually, not collectively, and they disappear from the physical realm. Any blade that's lost or hidden will eventually vanish. So what's up with the random one that Talon had instead of his honor blade? Questions, Brandon. Questions! Apparently, Ishna is a goth, using her light weaving to give herself edgy tattoos and black fingernails. And Vatha's into that. Cue the Radiant Goth Girl fan art! Felt's leading the rest of the folk back to Urethiru the long way, still wearing his floppy hat he got in Way of Kings. Shallan, accurately, suspects he's not from Roshar. Kellek warns her, you may see things that are not good for the healthy mortal mind, which sounds ominous. Light, energy, matter, investiture, the same essence in different forms. E equals MC squared times I. Seems like we're going to get some substantive light weavings from Shallan in this book. Spoilers! Their hug is really sweet. We're all trying to be better. Navani awakening the tower had more than just a localized effect. Other Oathgate spren seem to be more congenial. Makes sense, given that at least the Urethiru spren referred to the sibling as their parent. With all the doors unlocked, they found some cool stuff in the tower, including fabrial compasses for use in Shadesmar. Is it significant they're made with Heliodor, the same gemstone in the Alerter fabrial Vistum had in Shinovar, and the gemstone imprisoning Ba'ato Mishram? They're on their way, Adolin responding in a very relatable way to riding a flying horse. And then they get attacked. But we'll have to wait half a chapter for that. Chapter 8. We're talking about the wind all in past tense, which is concerning. The Kaladin, Zeth, and Nightblood team up begins. Nightblood's doing a lot of remembering, which is a marked change from when Zeth first got him. He recalls Lyft stressing the importance of travel snacks. She's right. Cal picks up his bag from Leighton, who gave him two extra uniforms, as well as Wit's flute, Tien's horse, and a mysterious dull brown rock. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. Dabid's being followed by an honor spren, specifically Lucintia, who was Shallan's guide in lasting integrity. It seems her staunch isolationism was overcome during Adolin's trial. Is a bond going to change Dabid? I don't think so, as he doesn't see himself as afflicted. Feels like a significant reminder of the Parshendi bone armor, maybe just because the Order of Bone sounds really cool. But that name's already used by the Dakor on Cell. Back to Shadesmar. Good thing Adolin brought his swords. Heading to the Azimir Oathgate from Lasting Integrity, they're right about here, nearish the Oathbound Spires, whatever those are, basically crossing into a mool from Tukar in the physical realm. Adolin gets knocked off Gallant, and Shallan dives after him. Actually, something more subtle here happens. Shallan had been lashed by Drehi, meaning the Stormlight holding her would be keyed to his identity, like a metal mind. And she just looked at her spirit web, casually changed her own identity to Drehi for a minute, and then sucked up his lashing like nothing. That's game-breaking. Is it because she's quasi-compounding with her two bonds? Maybe. Is it still nuts? <laughs> Chapter 9. The second and third Edge Dancer ideals are I will remember those who have been forgotten and listen to those who have been ignored. Seriously, who's writing these? I've heard arguments for Yasna, Sigzil, Renarin, which I think would be really interesting. The wind, which accompanied him in the last chapter, is pushing Kaladin forward. He wonders why an old woman in her 50s would pick up a spear. Two words. Mama Bear. You can't get more protective, and therefore more like a windrunner. 
Scar's tossing spears out the window. Quick reminder, Scar is based on Ethan Skarstedt, this guy, who also co-wrote the short story Heuristic Algorithm and Reasoning Response Engine with Brandon. Definitely worth the read. A career soldier indeed. This is also why it was just Drahi and Shadesmar, and not the dynamic duo. Looking at the new Windrunner recruits, Kaladin draws a Solemnity Spren? That's a new one. Off they rush to retrieve their spears, and off Syl rushes to fetch her things. She's incorporeal. What things it... huh? Shadesmar again, Shallan drops into the Sea of Beads, eventually making a platform out of a roof. Drehi saves Adolin's butt yet again. Doesn't last long, as more Heavenly Ones sneak attack and toss her off. Shallan swears the... Okay, Lightweavers are different because it's not ideals, it's truths, but either way, she just hit level 4? Doug on my Discord posited a theory that she's actually been swearing ideals for both Testament and Pattern, which is why this truth was kind of a repeat. Interesting. And Kellex talk about illusions with mass, something we saw hinted at during the Battle of Thalen Field, stabs the Heavenly One through the chest. Reality can be whatever I want. Cue the Radiant Muscle Mommy fan art. For you waiting for audio preview chapters, those should be released later this week, and then every Monday with the rest, so you can listen and find out.